Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that all, um, most of us are here today. And please be with those who are going on um, mission trips or home early. And um, please help us to get something out of this chapel talk today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, good afternoon. In just about uh, 24 hours from now, we should be headed home. That'd be kind of neat. Long needed break. So um, I told you yesterday that uh, my little series here is titled The Greatest of These is Love. And um, we're covering these three different areas, a mother's love, spousal love, or, you know, like boys and girls kind of thing. And then uh, loving your child, just what it's like once you uh, have a child. Um, so today we're going to talk about the second one, which was, you know, about loving your spouse. And I just had some ideas to share with you. And when I first did this, I really thought to myself, oh, well, I'm going to just have a little bit of fun. And I was going to use computer-generated AI to um, do all of my slides. So I asked it for a picture of Adam looking lonely. Now, he's got clothes on, which sounds like probably a good idea. Yeah, um, for sure. But anyway, uh, this particular text is from Genesis. It says, and Then the Lord God said, It's not good that man should be alone. I'll make a helper for him. My personal opinion is God didn't like make Adam and then go, Oh, whoops, maybe he needs a helper. I think God had a plan all along, don't you think? But my, also my personal opinion is I suspect that God wanted Adam to know that he needed something more. And if he'd have just made Adam and Eve at the very beginning, at the, right off the bat, Adam might not have really realized that guys are kind of dumb. We are a little clueless. We, it takes a little while to learn. But I think God maybe planned it this whole way for Adam to go, oh, I feel like I'm missing out on something. Anyway, so then I said to uh, the computer-generated AI, hey, show me a picture of Adam and Eve. And it gave me four pictures to choose from. This was one of them. Um, the good news is most of us are meant to live our lives with a partner by our side. That's pretty cool. What I wanted to share with you that was kind of interesting was, this is just the, the danger of computer-generated AI. It also came to me and said, well, this was... I know, the computer got a little confused about Adam and Eve. And uh, I think I got an Adam and Steve. And an Adam and Eve and somebody else. So obviously this is not God's plan. And this is just proof that you cannot trust computer AI to do anything for you. Don't believe what the computer tells you. So I thought at that point, I'm just going to switch to all my own photos, which is a little more fun anyway to use embarrassing photos of ourselves, you know, so that you guys can uh, enjoy things at our expense. Um, this, the first picture is actually a picture of when Lynette and I first met, which would have been in 1984 summer of 84, but it's really not 1952. That happens to be the address of the building. Uh, this was at the Grand Ledge camp meeting, and the little sign was just on our little um, like cabin. They had little cabins there. We put a little sign on the cabin. And uh, she and I were both working at the camp store, and uh, so that was kind of cool. Um, the next picture is actually, I guess you'd call it an engagement photo is what you'd probably call it these days. Um, and I just said these little points I wanted to give you along the way, little things that are kind of, that I've found are important about when you love somebody. Now, I mean, I say it's when you're married. Obviously, we're not even married here. We're learning and developing. But one of the things I figured out with Lynette right off the bat was um, she um, did not have the self-esteem that I thought she deserved. Um, maybe your family was just harder on her and things like that. And so I just thought, you know what, I always wanted to pick her up a little bit. And have you ever heard the story about the 10 cow um, lady? Right? Have you ever watched that video? Have you, what was that called, Dave? Do you remember? 10 cow bride, something like this? Johnny Lingo or something? All right, if you guys haven't seen that video, you'll have to watch it sometime. Very interesting, kind of fun. But the point was, this guy took what the village thought was the ugliest girl, and he started treating her like she was the most valuable thing there. And her father, of course, like, oh, yeah, you can... You know, and so he gives 10 cows for her when nobody else would get, you know, I mean, I don't know, people paid one, maybe two cows for a wife, but Johnny came in and paid 10 for his wife. And she just flourished because somebody loved her and found value in her. And uh, then the father was really mad. Oh, you stole her from me for a bargain. I should have charged 20 cows, you know. 
But um, so anyway, when I proposed to Lynette, I gave her 10 dozen roses, partly because I wrote a poem um, that talked about all these important things. And it says, you know, I'm looking for this in a, in a bride. And, you know, for this, I'll give you a dozen roses. And I came up with 10 things, and I didn't want to make the list any shorter. So I gave her 10 dozen roses. Of course, her father told me, he goes, you know, you can't eat roses. You have to actually make money and earn money to feed the family. So I was like, all right, thank you, Larry. I appreciate that. But anyway, this is her in her office with 10 dozen roses, which totally made the uh, Andrews University office smell amazing. Uh, this is us at our wedding day. And then this uh, that I wrote here says, um, God made Adam and Eve as an example for us to follow. If we follow in their footsteps, we'll have a happy life with someone and someone to share it with which is really a real pleasure. I would encourage you to make memories together. Um, this is us, obviously, on the Mackinac Bridge Walk. How many of you have ever walked the Mackinac Bridge on a Labor Day weekend? Not a lot. Hey, that's really kind of really cool to be that far up above the water. National Guard staged along the way so that nobody tries to jump off the side of the bridge or something weird like that. Um, and if, yeah, I don't know if you can read it in the tiny little corner there. You probably can't, but it's George Bush, and I think it's Mondale or whatever is the little uh, underneath the bridge little sign there. Appreciate the special deliveries. This is Lynette and uh, our oldest boy, Wyatt. Uh, this is on 3rd Street down there in Berrien Springs, right near the airport. And um, we were doing a photo shoot, and uh, it just was a cute little picture. And so that was, that was fun. An excellent wife, the Bible says in Proverbs. Um, who can find... She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. And that's definitely how I felt. And I just found this. We attended not a Renaissance fair, but it was, um, uh, was it? I don't know. Um, anyway. Uh, right before Halloween time, anyway. You know, Adventists, uh, we did, uh, Joni always does this. Anyway, um, we dressed up for actors in the play. Attack difficulties together. We, we painted our basement together. They say if you really want to test your marriage out, you should um, wallpaper a bathroom together, uh, trap you both in the same spot. But uh, so this is our basement in uh, Berrien Springs and us painting it. And I've just found that anytime you can do things together, difficulties, um, you learn from it. Embrace challenges together. Um, another fun one for a couple is always canoeing down a river together um, with one in the front and one in the back and trying to communicate back and forth. I see Mrs. Norcross is nodding her head. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good one. Having a loving spouse is one of the best gifts that comes from God. And when you trust in each other with all your heart, you'll have a happy and satisfying life. That's been our experience for sure. Um, uh, celebrate uniquenesses. This is, uh, does anybody know who that man is? You do? Who does? It's Dr. Mayer. Um, and of course, you might know Dr. Mayer, the younger Dr. Mayer, but this is Dr. Mayer's dad, Dr. Mayer. Um, Dr. Mayer delivered my wife uh, in 1968 when she was one pound and three ounces. Uh, she was born three complete months premature. Um, really, even today, um, the vast majority of children that born that early and that body weight don't usually make it. And those that do have significant problems, but not Lynette. Um, she was definitely a fighter from the beginning. And Dr. Mayer has always, every time you would see Lynette, uh, that we were up at Camp Asabo, uh, you can see the people trying to photobomb in the back. <laughs> um, but every time Dr. Mayer would see Lynette, he was always like, oh, it was nice to see her and really really appreciated that this young lady had really um, developed and grown so well. He was really pleased. Um, actually, when she was born for over a month, uh, they really were not sure that she would live. And so every day was a real challenge and a struggle. It's very cool that she has done so well. Um, celebrate together. Uh, here is uh, the three of us. This is Wyatt, and we're just having a little bit of fun at a Valentine's Day party at our church that we had helped organize. Laugh together. Can you see Mrs. Gardner? She has a pretty goofy husband. Uh, I, it's funny, I was surprised when I was looking for photos of Lynette and I yesterday. Probably 60% of them have me being completely goofy in them, maybe more. Um, and she just laughs through it all. Find solutions together. And sometimes that's a struggle. You've got to really kind of dig through something and try to figure that out. Colossians 3.19 says, Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. 
And the Bible just keeps it real simple for us and says that we should love one another and be kind. Marriage really wasn't meant to be difficult. And here's Lynette with uh, a little, uh, I think it was a Christmas party we had uh, at her mom's house where we were all making gingerbreads and she won the, won the contest, won the prize. It was pretty cool. Good for her. I'm praying together. That's the only pray picture I had of us together. I think we were out at Chapel in the Pines or something, and I was being goofy and had my phone down low and took a picture up. But uh, it's definitely important to um, sew your hearts together um, religiously as well as uh, in all the other aspects of your life. And then, of course, it, maybe it sounds ridiculously easy, but it's not always. And I would say just stay together. There's struggles. Um, Lynette and I, especially after the death of our second son, Zane, um, that was really, really difficult for us. And almost 80% of marriages after the death of a child end in divorce. Um, and what happens is you just become so um, isolated. You're so sad that you don't want to share with your spouse that you're sad um, because she looks maybe a little happier today than you are. And you don't want to bum her out. And so you're all being careful. And because you're being careful, you're not talking and communicating. And uh, when we finally just came back together and just said, I love you and I'm not going anywhere and we're going to work through this, all of a sudden all of our problems just went away. So I would just say stay together. It sounds really obvious, but it really is. And then uh, this one was cute. Uh, age together. Now that's not my wife and I, by the way. <laughs> but I saw this picture and I grabbed it offline and it just made me think about it because the other night, if any of you, some of you went to it, we had the food fair up at the elementary school. And uh, this one gentleman came in uh, Mr. Knight, Judd Knight, those of you who are in the community, Judd came by to get uh, supper for his wife, who I knew was probably in the car. And uh, we were talking, and they had been married for 70 years. And I said, how long have you been married? 70 years, he says. They go great on for 70 years. And I thought that was pretty, pretty cool, because 70 years together is quite a commitment. I mean, 70, I mean, these people are apparently, we would assume that they're almost 90 years old, right, give or take a little bit. But it happens. And uh, you'd be surprised. I know it probably totally blows a young person's mind to think about you know, old people growing old together and being happy being old together. But it really is wonderful to think of, you know, Lynette and I have been married for 33 years. I guess another 33 probably won't kill us. We'll see how that goes. So definitely age together. So that's just my thoughts to share with you a little bit about you know, love and loving someone else and caring for them, treating them really, really special and where that can end up for you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of love and love that you give us you know, in our families, from our mother that we learn to give to our spouses, Father. Um, all the different ways that we can show love to you and to other people. And our friends who are in Cuba are on their way to Cuba landing in Havana probably right about uh, now or soon. Um, they're there to show love, uh, your love. And we just ask that you'll bless them in their ministry. We ask it to be with each one of us as we walk through our journeys in life. Help us to find people that match with us well, Father, and that uh, we can show love to our families as well. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen.